Thank you, Wendell. Uh, I was asked to give you guys a little indication of how I got involved with the Billy Meyer story. I will give it to you real quick. In 1958, I was stationed in the military at Edwards Air Force Base. I did the post flight inspection one morning on the X-15. I finished doing that, went to the north end of the runway. There was three hangars that I hadn't, hadn't got into. Inside was a circular disc about 25 feet across, silver in color, a little unusual. I was 19 years old, but I had just been working on the super secret equipment that we had. I come back and ask my CO about it, and he said it was an ion-powered craft designed by Sikorsky for use in outer space. I accepted what he said because it made sense. I went back and asked my friend, who happened to be the base photographer, to get me some pictures of that craft. And he said, uh, what did they tell you? I told him, and they basically said that's not true. Proceeded to show me pictures of the two dead aliens, who were humanoid looking, but obviously not me. So I immediately went back and confronted my commander and asked him why he didn't tell me the truth. And he said, when the government's ready to tell the truth about UFOs and ETs, they will. Until then, you'll be stick to that story. I was reminded that that weekend was Armed Forces Day, which they opened up the base. And if any, any of the civilians would happen to see the craft, uh, I was also supposed to give them the Sikorsky information. Anyway, within 10 days, I was transferred off the base. I didn't say another word about it. I was a good if you want to call it a military person. I spent a little over four and a half years, got in, got out of the service, became pretty successful in the game of monopoly. I have a background in law, business, real estate development. I've built in 22 states. My last real estate project was $100 million. In 1984, I uh, built a million-dollar house up in Aspen, and the housekeeper had a book called UFO, Contact from the Pleiades. You remember that, the picture book? I looked at those pictures that were incredible because they were exactly the same thing I had seen 25 years before. So I grabbed my plane the next day. I flew down and I talked to Lee and Britt Elders in Phoenix, which uh, they said they were investigating a man in Switzerland with Wendell Stevens, who claimed to be in contact with beings from the star system, the Pleiades, and gave me some more of the information. And I said, well, I don't know about your story. I'm building real estate projects, but uh, I know that picture's real. I said, what can I do? And they said, well, we need money. And I said, that's not a problem. I'll tell you, give me your proposition, which they did. So I put up the money. And 90 days later, uh, they welched on our contract, frankly. And so what I did is filed suit against them. But I was so enamored in the suit, I then grabbed a plane and I flew to Zurich, Switzerland. I knocked on the door at, at Billy's house. He lives about 45-minute drive outside. And a uh, lady named Bruni answered the door, and I introduced myself as George Green. I put up the money for their projects in the United States, and she says, we don't know you. All Americans are crooks. And I says, what do you mean? I says, you're supposed to be getting money from uh, over there. That's what they told me. Well, they claimed they had never got any. I can't verify that or not. I said, look, I'm just here. I, I have some questions. I want to know. I have the ability and the money to help get the information out if that's necessary. Anyway, they came back about 10 minutes later and said, I'm sorry, Billy's not seeing anybody. I says, hey, end of story. My wife and I are going to take off. We're going over to Austria and have a vacation. Where's the closest hotel? So they gave it to me. And, uh, Methuselah, how, what is that? Wyla is about 15 minutes. Anyway, uh, we went over to uh, Wyla, got a hotel. And uh, the next morning, uh, Bruni's knocking on my door and delivered me a two-page message from the commander of the spacecraft, supposedly Quetzal. And it was about me personally with information that nobody on this planet knew about. Got my attention, and we come back over the next week, and frankly got my mind blown, and I made an agreement with the ETs basically to publish the information, subject to me getting rid of that contract that he had signed with Lee Elders. So I flew back to the United States, talked to my attorneys, which were the attorneys for the Screen Actors Guild. I had a house in Beverly Hills at that time, too. And it uh, gave them the, the job to try to break the contract. We had it all set up. And uh, we got Billy on the phone and told him, look, we got the thing set up. All you have to do is fly over here to the United States. Methuselah will tell you a little bit more about it later. But basically, what occurred in that meeting with my attorneys, and we we're talking to Billy in Switzerland, is Billy, had, when I was there, had shown me pictures of San Francisco and the West Coast going under that he had taken pictures of. He says, I knew it was going to occur sometime in the future. I'm safe, and I have three children. I'm not leaving Switzerland. At that point, I said, look, I got a problem. I'm in, in the courts all the time. I'm a real estate developer. Everybody sues real estate developers. So I said, I don't want to get involved with this thing. We'll try to set it up. There's got to be another way. So then I flew down and talked to Wendell. And Wendell 
course, didn't, couldn't do anything about it. He had other projects going on at that time, but I did agree to help him on some of his other projects and publish his material. Well, how does this all equate is, when we were there, we agreed to, with the extraterrestrials, to assist them in getting information out. When, I think Methuselah, are you going to show pictures of the wedding cake? Yes. Okay, during that, that time and later on, um, during, since we left there, I've been involved with the, the Pleiadians who are in contact with them indirectly. They've been having their spacecraft follow us around. I mean, you know, I made a deal. <laughs> so <laughs> what happens is that uh, we, we come to the point and started looking at different devices, and that's where I'm going to shut down. I've got a long story I could tell you, but we're not going to do it today. What we're looking at, the wedding cake, there was, if you start looking at it for ideas of how the propulsion of these craft are and how do they run. Well, to make it simple, you set up magnetic fields. And uh, Pat Bailey's here, who's a physicist, and we were talking about it earlier. I run across several what we call over unity devices. And to make it real simple so you people can see what it is, I'm going to show a demonstration now. It's on that little table over here. Now, simply what it is, everybody's familiar with uh, refrigerator magnets. You know the little magnets that have them on top of them? You know the little animals that you put on to put your papers on them? We'll take off all the animals and you have a little square. And they're all positive and they're all negative on one side. Now, I guess I should walk over and see if that works out. Okay. <clears throat> We're going to bring the uh, images up on the screen so you'll be able to see it a lot better. It's going to be on camera. Okay, uh, come over to the podium to explain the part, and then we'll go back there for the screen demonstration. Okay, I'll, I'll do it this way. This is a simple PVC, plastic vinyl. It's an old, you know, plastic vinyl tube. You just cut it down to about one inch, which is the size of these little black magnets, as you've seen them. They're all glued in. They're all the same direction, the north and the south. All one side is south, the other one's the north. But you're going to notice something. In, I don't know if you can see it or not, you will in a minute when they do the videos, there's a little hole in it. That gives the ability then from the magnet to be a horseshoe magnet itself. So we got two magnets within each weather. Now what we also have, I want you to look at this because when you see the wedding cake, you're going to see these big round balls around the outside of it, but there's a big space. You can imagine it with you can see this thing. Now it's connected to another what we call a round magnet basically. It's just a flat bang on both sides. Now what I've done is glue just a plain old steel ball, you know, the old pinballs, to the bottom so you can get an idea of what it is. End of story. Now you want to see what happens. Now what you have to do is start thinking of the possibilities by using a simple device this. We were looking at doing it commercially, which we do have it done, but the people that put it together originally have been shot at a couple times and it's not right. So why don't we make a toy so everybody can at least think about it, do you understand? Okay, now I'll go make the thing so you can see how it works. Okay, now uh, we'll bring it up on the screen. You notice the gap that he has in the magnets, in the ring of magnets, and he's going to put that ring down over the other slice of a bar magnet glued onto a ball. Can you get a light on it? We're going to have it on the screen here if you watch up here. And he's, when he does this and gets it centered, the ball, the little ball inside, and the disc will revolve by themselves, and they'll revolve perpetually. It's being done strictly by magnetic power. There you can see it, which tells us that free energy is infinitely simple. It's just the interrelationship of magnetic fields, and that's what he's demonstrating. Thank you, thank you, George. Okay, this time uh, I'm going to do things. Uh, did you get to see it? Okay, going to do things a little bit different.